Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eveli Leppamets from Nasdaq Tallinn, and I welcome you today on Baltic Horizon Fund webinar. The webinar will be hosted by the fund manager of Baltic Horizon Fund, Tarmo Karotam, who will introduce us Baltic Horizon Fund results of the third quarter 2019. Right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. I invite you to use the question box on the right side of the screen to send the questions in. You can send questions during the whole webinar. All questions will be answered after the presentation. Now we are ready to be begin, so Tarmo, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Tarma Grottam from uh, Baltic Horizon and I would like to give um, an update on the quarterly uh, re report and the third quarter of, of the fund. Um, we have received some uh, questions over the past uh, um, uh, quarter as well and uh, I will try to answer them during this um, presentation. So let's uh, kick off with the traditional first slide, which is the main events of, of, of last quarter. Um, I would say that overall, um, the three quarters, <clears throat> well, actually, now we're already on the on the fourth quarter today, but uh, <clears throat> but these are some of the information uh, uh, that has been uh, publicized through the through the Nasdaq, and uh, they have been also the the key points. Uh, for for the fund fund development fund uh, results this year, um, we have continued to pay out a, a regular quarterly dividend. I think uh, this is now the twelfth consecutive dividend uh, since the listing of of the fund uh, in 2016, and um, it's good to see that the portfolio has been uh generating stable cash flow over the years and quarters uh, this year for baltic horizon was quite an important year in terms of growth and um, um, as uh, newsec the largest uh, con one of the largest consulting agencies in the in the baltics have have uh, also calculated uh, and declared that um, Baltic Horizon has become the listed single entity, um, the largest listed uh, single entity fund in the Baltics, investing directly in in, in Baltic uh, real estate. So um, the growth uh, has come uh, this year um, by acquiring uh, three new uh, buildings, cash flow buildings. Uh, worth more than 100 million euros in, in gross asset value. Uh, so it has been uh, the, the, the busiest year for Baltic Horizon uh, uh, to date. And uh, the year was started off with um, an acquisition of, of Tueto 2, which is a sister building of Tueto 1, completed in 2017. But Tueto 2 now was, was, was built and uh, tenanted um, uh, earlier this year and uh, finished in February. And as we had the pre-agreement in place to buy it, uh, at the pre-agreed yield of 7.1%, we closed this transaction in, in March. And we closed it with the means and capital um, that we already had in the fund. Then uh, spring and late spring uh, was a very active uh, period um, as that uh, we were in negotiations to acquire Galleria Centros, uh, the largest transaction of Baltic Horizon to date uh, in the amount of 75 million euros. And uh, the preparation um, for the transaction took uh, almost nine months. Uh, lots of discussions involved uh, with the due diligence of the property since it has more than 100 tenants and uh, it's quite an historic uh, property. Um, but um, but also with uh, with securing attractive uh, financing for for this transaction. We. Uh, had a general meeting of investors beginning of the year um, to establish the the issue of new units specifically or mainly for this project 
it was a private placement targeting uh, our larger investors but also uh, newer newer uh, t uh, newer investors with with tickets with more than um, 100,000 euros um, and uh, we were very uh, happy to um, see a very strong result for the for the um, for the offering in April that the offer was actually oversubscribed by more than more than 60 percent we had a, a new large investor come into the uh, into the fund uh, SCB uh, Baltic pension funds all uh, subscribe for for a certain amount of units and uh, and thus, we were able to secure also bank financing with Ope Bank and uh, close then the transaction uh, of Galleria in, in July. So, um, the, um, the, good, the, the good thing about the third quarter actually was that uh, it was the, the first uh, quarter where, where um, Galleria Centros was also uh, producing uh, uh, income from from operations, and uh, that resulted uh, also in, in very good um, uh, quarterly uh, result. Uh, the uh, net cash generated was was almost uh, three point one cents. Uh, per unit of which then uh, we decided to pay out uh, 2.7 uh, cents per unit in uh, beginning of, of November uh, totaling of almost 3.1 million euros so going forward um, the net generated cash flow for the entire year if you uh, on an annualized basis so for the fund is now more than 12 million euros and we're continuing the same dividend strategy of paying out, uh, you know, at least 80% of those proceeds uh, to the investors on a regular basis. Um, then, as an as an aftermath of the of the spring uh, issue, uh, we had quite a lot of uh, investor appetite uh, <clears throat> um, still still uh, still pending. So. Um, the uh, second object that we had been negotiating since the beginning of the year was a North Star B-class office building in Vilnius, um, located about uh, two kilometers from the CBD. And uh, the main tenant in that building is the tax authority of, um, of, of Lithuania. And we were able to complete that transaction in early uh, Q4, so in October. And... Uh, and uh, we we still have uh, some equity uh, left over, uh, which we have now started to invest into our development projects. I will give you more details on that a bit later. But you know, taking a little bit of a, a longer uh, view back, you know, um, after two very busy years, I would say of uh, targeting uh, and acquiring uh, i would call strategic um, assets for the fund uh, today we can state that the fund has a prime retail asset in each of the baltic capital cities and we have continued to diversify also the office segment so uh, acquired uh, quite a few uh, office buildings in in the in the capital cities, um, uh, maybe a comment on 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 our strategy regarding the office buildings that um, we are we are generally targeting uh, city center properties, um, CBD properties, but also uh, let's say uh, properties that are in in the close vicinity of the of the city center, the so-called B B B one type of office buildings. And that's for the reason, because we are a strong believer of of um, the back office segment still remaining very strong in the Baltics, especially in Lithuania, and uh, that not all uh, tenants want to be in the central areas, um, CBD areas, paying uh, 30 to 50 percent uh, more rent than than in B1 locations located just a few kilometers away. 
and I think uh, also in Dueto buildings and, and in, in, in many of um, our, our office buildings we can uh, uh, we can safely say that the tenants there are off of a high institutional grade, uh, top notch, uh, and um, and we're really happy to have them professional partners such as uh, uh, yeah. Well, in the next slide you will see um, all those tenants that we have <coughs> in the portfolio today. Now. Um, Many people have asked that you know how quickly and how far do we want to grow with Baltic Horizon? And uh, my answer has always been and, and still remains that we want to grow sustainably, meaning that we are looking for for suitable objects for our strategy, meaning you know retail assets in in central locations and and office office buildings with strong international tenants, newly built. Um, and um, and that's the strategy basically going forward. So we are continuing to monitor the situation. Um, there's a lot of properties on the market today. Um, uh, not all of them um, are attractive uh, for the for the for the strategy that we have. But um, but it takes a lot of time to to work through those those potential transactions and see whether they are suitable for us. So, um, in addition to our sort of uh, stabilized growth strategy by acquiring you know, cash flow properties uh, with uh, with some value added um, potential, um, we already have quite a few properties in the in the portfolio, and we talked about it in before that we can expand and we can uh, develop further and. Um, this has become quite an attractive proposition for 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 the fund because um, the expected prices of of certain you know top-notch uh, properties that are um, in central locations uh, are still very high, and the cost of that um, um, has started to to increase. So um, there, there's definitely good risk and return relationship in in expanding the properties that we currently have. There was a question on on, on uh, where we are with Postima and Coca-Cola Plaza expansion um, as of today. Uh, this preparation uh, and this is internal preparation really has has taken some time. It has taken almost two years, and um, we have what we really want to do is something something really exciting that um, that uh, has a concept that uh, that is refreshing. Uh, that has an architectural design that is not boring, just you know, big box, uh, you know, white uh, rectangular walls, and also has an interior design and and very easy logistics within the within the new area. And the key, of course, uh, the, the brainstorm has been around uh, how to make. The internal logistics uh, within the complex in the future um, uh, most most sort of um, uh, most enjoyable and uh, you know cinema is a big stakeholder in in this case and and uh, we have discussed also their ideas what they would like to see and and uh, where their main entrance uh, will be in the future and how they would like to see the um, <clears throat> the people uh, or the cinema visitors in the in the building and um, and of course from our side uh, it has been always a key that that uh, when connecting these two buildings it will uh, improve the uh, the accessibility to the rotterman area but also uh, you know cross sections uh, also from the uh, from the old town to the to the hoboyama area um so if to give some some ideas of the timeline uh, then we are already designing um, uh, we have entered into design uh, design works and are planning to apply for the construction permit um, as soon as possible based on the design criteria then with the city and the goal is is also now to talk with tenants 
uh, potential new tenants, um, but of course also the the current ones. Um, I think the main so stakeholder still is is the cinema, which will be mostly involved in the first phase, which is building to buildings together, and and then hopefully continue with the construction um, in the second half of of next year. Um, when you talk about the construction market in Estonia, then um, you know, as was foreseen already, you know, I think I mentioned it already, also about a year ago, that that uh, the construction market is is becoming uh, more attractive for us, meaning that large large properties have large construction projects have been finished by many of the construction companies and. And uh, they are quite hungry for work. So um, if we will launch a construction tender probably early next year, we expect to have a lot of um, participants and and uh, and a lot of good offers from the strong leading construction companies in Estonia. And um, so it's definitely in process. Um, but um, what we have already started as of today is the Meraki expansion. I will show you more pictures uh, later on in the presentation, um, and that's the expansion of Thomas Pro uh, uh, commercial complex that we have in uh, in Vilnius. Um, uh, today it's um, about 16, 17,000 uh, leasable area, including an office area, uh, gym, and and um, and um, and Remy and and other food food operators, um, and we aim to double it with. Uh, with the office expansion to towers and um, achieve then 32,000 net leasable area um, and and a a, a absolutely um, you know wonderful commercial complex um, um, you know with its in its own right in in a few years time. So the aim is to we have started today and the aim is to complete. Uh, the construction um, no later than Q1 21. Um, at work is also the renewal of the Votabilita concept. That's a smaller project but important one, um, you know, to enhance Spiritus uh, uh, supermarket um, uh, concept um, for the for the residents in the area. And we have conducted studies. We believe that. Uh, we really understand what is expected of of this uh, center, and um, and I hope to give you more information about that um, in the next presentation as well. So this is a slide. It it keeps on 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 uh, widening itself. Uh, today we have uh, 15 properties in the books. Uh, with a gross asset value um, now close to close to 300 and actually more than 350 million, since these results here are based on the third quarter and don't include yet a North Star uh, office building. Um, but yeah, we are more than more than 150,000 square meters of leasable area and. Um, more than 300 tenants with an um, average vacancy of, of roughly three percent. So maybe maybe to to state you know uh, this year uh, when we did the uh, Dueto 2 acquisition um, we had uh, as you can see quite a few strong tenants come into the portfolio. Remy uh, with their office um, uh, for for Vilnius. Sweco, a, a Swedish uh, listed engineering company, AstraZeneca, but but also most importantly, um, Tueto One and Tueto Two now have uh, the Vilnius water supply um, as a municipal tenant and Vilnius heating. Uh, so we have two municipal tenants here being added to the portfolio. Um, we have had a little slightly higher vacancy um, in, in Postimaya over the past few quarters and uh, I am happy to state that uh, we have signed also an agreement uh, um, on the uh, on the ground floor um, next to Rimi with um, a shoe store uh, at Eichmann. So they are going to I think they're, they're just about to open the, the store, if if haven't already. 
so the the vacancy in Q4 should should, should decrease for for Postimaya, mm, but we there is some structural vacancy there in the place on the second floor we are where we are planning the breakthrough uh, the, to the middle part. So uh, we ex expect to bring that vacancy down to zero in the next uh, uh, year or so when when we actually are are going forward with the expansion project. Also slightly than expected uh, vacancy in Galleria uh, in the third quarter, but uh, but expect that also to go down in the fourth quarter as as uh, as some vacancies are already being already filled uh, that I know of. Mm. And uh, what, but in the shopping center cases, uh, you know, three to five percent vacancy usually is quite standard uh, because the retail scene is demand, demand dynamic, and and uh, and uh, many concepts are 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 um, are not um, not sustainable for more than a couple of years, so they have to be renewed or or replaced, and uh, that's just. Uh, the the background of retail it's interesting to note that you know over the past few years the average uh, salaries in the in all of the baltic states especially estonia but now more and more in lithuania and, and latvia has increased um, you know we're talking about 30 40 percent over the past five years in estonia and double digit growths now also seen in 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 uh, in other um, uh, countries and what's also quite interesting is that um the the footfall of the centers uh, you know has has generally been for us quite quite stable um uh, maybe in some quarters with you know minus one percent uh, you know then you have again you know plus one so it's it's been quite stable but but the average check average spending and average turnovers um has been going up and and um and quite uh, quite notably so the 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 tenants um tenants are, are doing generally well. Uh, so another view of the of the properties that we have uh, in the books. Uh, so uh, the largest uh, allocation today is in, in Riga um, and uh, but otherwise uh, yeah quite a diverse portfolio of of assets um, uh, and um, and uh, also also vacancies have been kept uh, stable um, quite low or the mobile also in, in q3 we have increased our allocation now in latvia to 43 percent and uh, i would say your our focus is is has been coming going back more now to estonia and and lithuania Dharma, we, we can't hear you. Oh, hello. Yes, now we hear. Oh, Thanks. I think I just ac accidentally put the mute button on. Um, yeah, so uh, we have about 50% retail, uh, a little bit more than 50% retail as of today with the acquisition of, of Galleria, but in the office office uh, segment uh, yeah needless to say we are focusing on, on increasing that um, we yeah uh, for so and, and focusing more on Estonia um, and Lithuania financing um, this is an interesting topic um, of course you know, uh, I've always said that um, you know one cannot just talk about deals in, in 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 commercial real estate market. It's it's also about the other end and uh, the cost of debt um, and the availability, but also the the conditions of debt uh, is equally important. Um, other than you know high high occupancies and, and strong tenants. So. Uh, we have been focusing on this for the past few years. Um, fund has been growing, and, and as you know, we have uh, we have issued a bond um, and and also tapped onto the bond beginning of the year. So we have 50 million euros worth of bond outstanding. 
Um, also, beginning of last year, we renegotiated all of our loan agreements, and um, excellent time to do it. Um, so the average uh, weighted mat debt maturity is still more than three years, um, and you can see the chart over there. But we are already preparing now for potential refinancing. We're thinking about it, and um, the the key here is is of course to keep the cost of debt down. Um, we did have an issue of of uh, of the bond uh, at 4.25 percent coupon, and uh, one may argue that that uh, this is maybe maybe higher than the cost of financing we can we can get from the banks. That's true, but you know when you become a player in the bond market, and then usually the first bonds are always slightly more expensive and. Uh, uh, also, not to not to forget that this is a unsecured bond. Um, so, um, so uh, we are definitely, you know, continuing to discuss with our bond investors, uh, mainly institutional investors in the Baltic states, pension funds, and insurance companies, uh, for. <coughs> For for potential preparation of of a rollover, or maybe even a a different bond structure uh, down the road. Um, so, uh, but you know the amortization of our loans currently is is extremely low. So uh, we are uh, aiming, you know, to keep the. Uh, the LTV is between 50 to 55 percent, slightly more in Q3, but I think that has already come down in Q4. Um, so to keep a good balance of equity debt, for example, the last uh, acquisition of Northstar we made with with only 43 percent uh, leverage. So um, um, that's bringing down the average LTV for for the fund. Uh, some um, some key figures also in uh, putting putting things in in perspective that uh, you know so since 2016 we have grown uh, almost three times um, um, our gross asset our gross asset value being more than 350 uh, or approximately there and um, and continue to to pay out quite a stable stable dividend of of 2.5 to 2.7. Uh, cents per unit, uh, depending on the on the quarter results. Um, in some quarters, um, the result has maybe been yeah, slightly <clears throat> slightly below, but that's mainly because the asset, the investments uh, that we have made and to take an equity in, into the fund um, <coughs> has has somewhat been uh, been uh, has taken more time, so uh, the equity hasn't been invested as quickly as, as as possible. But usually, within let's say four to six weeks, we have been able to to deploy the equity that we have raised in the in the capital raising rounds. And um, uh, Galeria was also an example of that. Uh, when we raised money in in end of April, beginning of May, we we closed the transaction early June. It's just that uh, sometimes, sometimes it takes a bit longer, especially in more complicated transactions. Whereas Northstar was was closed uh, much much quicker. We raised uh, the equity for it uh, beginning of October, and within five days we closed the transaction. So we aim to keep those uh, those um, uh, times uh, at at a minimum. Now, just just a comment on on. Uh, on something which which also happened actually last last quarter in Q2 we had uh, semi-annual valuations and uh, it was interesting to see how um, because of the, of the economic uh, sort of prospects and uh, growth prospects um, in Europe um, uh, particularly in 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 the Nordic countries have been uh, somewhat curtailed and um, the expectation on the inflation has been also much lower than in the previous uh, previous periods then um, the evaluators when having visited the 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 valuations and the expected increase of uh, the NOI uh, due to in the inflation adjusted numbers then uh, they had some let's say negative effect into the into the valuations so sometimes even the NOI had 
generally increased um, the long-term 10-year forecast on, since they were downgraded uh, due to this lower inflation ex, uh, estimation then it did have a, a slight effect on the on the NAV so let's say interesting to see what will happen in in now in the fourth quarter valuations but but I do generally expect the valuations to remain remain stable Uh, the Q3 numbers now compared to the last quarter, yes, we've had um, an increase. Um, I think interesting to note is the the, uh, the parallel increase um, of ad admin expenses, which has been much less than the NOI expenses and operating profit expenses, um, whereas also just to note that uh, the financial expenses due to the loans that we have taken um, this year being uh, being slightly slightly more than the average, uh, then uh, this has uh, increased um, uh, slightly more than the the, uh, the operating profit. Um, and the income tax charge, which uh, which which is there, then uh, mm, this is uh, still relatively minute. Then um, there's been a, um, also a few questions on on um, on the financing and and um, the financing sort of strategy that the fund has and 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 also a question that you know how much investors are being uh, diluted in the, in the process of of raising additional equity. Then um, you know over the years we have always aimed to raise the uh, the new funds based on the most recent NAV, so the net asset value. Um, so the dilution in this case should be quite minimal, um, mainly related uh, perhaps to some expenses. Uh, we did have a, a new issue in the beginning of the year which was slightly below the NAV uh, and that was a decision of the, of the investors. Um, and um, But I would overall, you know, uh, overall, say that the dilution generally over the years has been has been quite quite low. Whereas, you know, I think here is to also again em emphasize, you know, why why are the, why do we have the reasons to grow? You know, why we we didn't want to be, you know remain as a hundred million or let's say two hundred million euro fund, and and uh, we're planning to to also to uh, follow a sustainable growth strategy in the future. And the reasons are, of course, that we have more much more diversification uh, in the portfolio when it comes to tenants, um, you know, uh, so that you know, whatever happens to to certain tenants potentially moving out from the Baltics or 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 some effect, then it will not be not be uh, felt in the portfolio overall. Then. Um, of course, a diverse offering of spaces to tenants, and this is key in retail. Uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a big difference if you're negotiating under behind the negotiating table, you know, negotiating with the likes of H and M uh, and Inditex Group, Papranga, and you're saying we have only one small shop, shopping center, for example, in in Vilnius. Whereas, you know, the the, the the picture has changed and I've been really happy to see that, that uh, we are able to offer them a one-stop shop also for new tenants coming to the market that, um, that um, if you, you know, you can have a position, entry position in all Baltic capitals because no, no strong tenant, especially in retail, is looking um, at, at the Baltics that, uh, okay, we choose just one country. So they definitely have a rollout uh, strategy. So just to become a bit bigger player, uh, it 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 does add add clout uh, and and, and uh, negotiating uh, uh, performance. Of course, if we grow, uh, it's we have bigger visibility uh, in in many 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 points of view for investors, for the financiers, um, for tenants. And um, and and if you if you also look how the trading you know of our our, our fund on the stock exchange has increased, uh, I have a slide on that as well over the past few years. Then that has definitely um, improved the liquidity. So yes, there are costs involved uh, you know for 
for for this expansion, but but uh, we strongly believe that uh, those costs are reasonable uh, for the for the uh, for the general benefits that actually these these bring, and last but not least, which is I think uh, our definite long-term strategy when it comes to financing, is to grow to a level where um, uh, we have, for example, if you look at the, the the debt structure here, we have ability to you know be sizable enough to to either attack the the capital markets you know with um, with an issue of 200 million euro bond or 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 then have a combination of very attractive financing terms with the, with the banks and uh, if you're a one off player uh, today in a market then um, your cost of debt is is more than 3% uh, if you want to get new loans um, for developers even higher so so let's say even if if in short term the cost of that uh, due to the the, the first bond 4.25 has, has slightly increased you know if you look at the peers in an audix or or any other you know larger real estate companies that have assets of, of you know a couple of billions at least then uh, the cost of that really you know even today and especially today um is is uh, for sure under two percent uh some mostly mostly between one and one and a half percent and in in some cases even below one percent so it's definitely our target uh, going forward in the next uh, let's say three years as a financial strategy and um yes so we aim to um, at some point improve the um, uh, the cost of that significantly. Uh, so yeah, the, the trading uh, on the stock exchange um, has continued to increase, and there are months that uh, that um, that are, that are fast, it's sort of more. There's more trading than 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 the others, and uh, I think in the past uh, past few few months we had. Uh, as you can see a few peaks here because uh, uh, we had some of the investors do block trades um, uh, of their units um, um, but um, but overall uh, we are uh, turning around our own whole market cap in about eight and a eight eight point three years based on the last 12 months uh, information that means more than one one 1.5 percent, uh, 1.5 million uh, euros being traded on a monthly basis, um, around 20 million, up to 20 million traded annually. Uh, so that's that's uh, the act, 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 activeness in the stock exchange uh, with our unit. And um, I think last quarter, at some point, we were even in top five most liquid securities in the Baltics, uh, behind the likes of uh, Tallinn Port. Uh, Thailink, Xiaoliai uh, Banka, and, uh, and I think there was one more. So yeah, we have I think become quite a notable instrument um, in in the stock exchanges of both Tallinn and Stockholm. So last but not least, uh, uh, a, a an overview of of what we are doing behind the scenes when it comes to the sustainability uh, strategy. Um, and the ESG uh, strategy in, in, in general. Um, a lot of focus has been been going on this uh, since 2000, I would say, 17, and, and I think in 19 uh, it was the busiest year um, where we uh, we we definitely you know really analyzed our, our data to see um, what data we actually have. And uh, if, if, if certain systems need to be upgraded uh, because of that, in order to you know uh, get better data, so um, and and also look into our internal processes more and more. So you know how 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 often we are talking with with our our employees, with our tenants, with the stakeholders, and and uh, and um, there's been improvement already this year, but but. Uh, most likely uh, next year will be the major year where where a lot of these uh, plans that we have uh, are going to be implemented so so uh, we have an action plan for 2020 uh, i would say 20 
and uh, this comes also from uh, from the grass reporting uh, we have uh, started to 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 test how that looks so grasp is global real estate uh, um, uh, sustainability benchmark so uh, it is a, a self-evaluating -evalu tool where you can measure yourself against the others in in, uh, in many aspects. Uh, so um, and and the, under the ESG umbrella. So um, so these are the, these are definitely let's say the actions that we're planning to take. Now, when it comes to the environmental part, then uh, currently we are in the process of developing a a. Um, a, a sustainability plan uh, requiring potentially some investments um, into into all of our properties and I, I think most likely next year will be will be that year as well where where we can after the analysis you know say that for each of these properties we need to do this and this and this so um, over, the, over the years in order to keep the the uh, co2 um, footprint low and and in order to keep the costs uh, for our tenants tenants low of course these uh, investments need to have a return and and uh, this is something which is also part of the part of the exercise uh, so uh, before we we go into the the other questions uh, if there are any I'd like to show you a, a small clip uh, from um, Vilnius uh, recorded a couple of weeks ago. So this is a lens plot next to next to our Domus Pro complex, and we have started we have started uh, construction there, preparations for underground parking and and foundations. Oop, let's uh, see how this works. So uh, we are talking to uh, already with tenants, and we have signed the first lease agreement with with uh, with a cafeteria. It's a it's a pre-lease agreement, and uh, and working on uh, working on on uh, you know certain other pre-lease agreements as well. We have one head of terms signed with a tenant coming from our own complex uh, that likes to would like to expand, and uh, and we are targeting. Um, with, with our project, uh, quite a few tenants in the older buildings, um, office tenants in the neighborhood. And um, <clears throat> the idea is, uh, you know, the, the concept uh, of, of this building uh, is actually two, uh, two office towers um, of uh, at least bring very good certificate with, uh, with solar panels on the roof. And um, we are, um, currently in the process of building the, the underground parking and signing up pre-leases. So one tower is about 8,000 8, square meters of, of uh, lettable space. And uh, our target is to achieve at least 50% pre-lease before we start the tower. And potentially if we find a, a, a larger tenant um, or more tenants, then we will build uh, the, the two towers in, in one go. Uh, that's something to be to be looked into and after the i would say after q1 next year when when uh, the underground parking is ready just to give you a flavor of what's happening in vilnius if um, if you're not so well, well aware with the office market it's definitely the 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 most active office market in uh, in the baltic still for years, the take up of office uh, space has been, uh, you know, 80, 90, and this year actually even 100,000 square meters by tenants. So yes, the competition is also strong. Um, and in our case, you know, we're definitely positioning ourselves as a as a as a professional long term uh, landlord with an attractive price offering, but but of good quality and 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 also a well working complex. So the complex that can offer, you know, shopping, um, that can offer uh, restaurants, that can offer a gym, 
even a ballet studio that we have already in place in in uh, in the in the Domus Pro complex. So um, of course we are competing with other other developments in this um, in this area, but. Um, but yes, you already seeing now the interest in our, our in our property um, from the tenant side. Um, uh, we are we're confident that uh, this will be a, a successful project. Um, and uh, as I said, I think earlier, we plan to uh, complete this expansion in Q1 2021. So. This is to show that that you know with the 350 million euro portfolio that we have in place, uh, we would like to keep um, you know maximum let's say uh, five to ten percent of that portfolio in in development projects. So uh, we we believe the risk return relationship, um, if carefully planned, this is very attractive, um, and uh, potentially would also increase the the dividend um, payouts and dividend levels um, of the fund uh, going forward into the future so yes I, I welcome investors to keep a close eye on on these locations and uh, and I will keep uh, updating you know uh, in the quarter reports about the recent recent uh, developments so um, also well, last but not least, we have a Vinodas property in in, um, in, uh, in Riga, where we have also expansion possibility of around 6,000 square meters, and uh, we are hopefully uh, getting a construction permit for the expansion uh, uh, in in December this year, um, and and then we will will enter into discussions with uh, with the current. Uh, well, uh, Latvian State Forestry um, tenant who is in the old building, and and um, to see how we can actually go forward with that expansion plan as well. So hopefully I answered um, most of the questions that were sent to me um, earlier, and I would welcome uh, any any other questions. I still think we have we have some time. Yes, thank you, Tarmo, for the presentation. At the moment, we have no questions received yet. So, dear participants, if you have some questions, we will give you one more minute. Please send your questions in using the question box on the right side of the screen. Okay, I think we have a we have a question. Yes, so the reasons of NAV decreased during 2019. Um, if you have followed our, our NAV, then then uh, NAV builds up during the quarter due to the uh, net cash you know coming into the fund um, on a quarterly basis. Uh, that's uh, that's more than three million. Um, and that, uh, when paid out to the investors, will decrease the NAV um, by, by that percentage amount. Uh, we have also had, due to the negative uh, interest rates, uh, even going 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 forward into the negative territories, have had um, a negative influence by our our, our swaps, uh, which are non-cash instruments uh, um, during the period of our loans. Um, uh, so, so this has also decreased the NAV um, over over this year, um, and as I mentioned, uh, we had some also negative effect. I think it was roughly two percent um, in Q2 uh, because of the the adjusted uh, um, lower inflations um, by our evaluators due to um, these expectations of inflation numbers uh, being considerably smaller uh, than in the previous estimations. I remember the the average estimation of the value of the inflation was 2.7, uh, 
a percent per annum, um, but it was downgraded to 2% uh, per annum because these are the latest uh, estimates of our local central banks and, and, um, and institutions um, that deal with it. But, but hopefully, hopefully also our expansions will will now influence the the value the, the NAB more, um, and um, it's also been good to see that the the market price of the fund uh, for most of the year has been trading at a at a premium to NAB. Okay, thank you, Tarmo, for the answer. Um, at the moment, uh, we have no more questions. Once again, dear participants, if you have, please use the opportunity for one more minute. Okay, seems that uh, we have no more questions for today. So the recording of the webinar will be available also in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel uh, webinar playlist. Tarmo Karutam, thank you for the presentation and for the answers given. Dear participants, thank you for joining and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.